The Tibetan Buddhists believe in the transmigration of souls. When someone dies, they suppose that the soul of that person goes immediately into a different body, the body of a child born at the same instant. This belief becomes vitally important when their spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, dies. A search is made for a boy born at the moment when the great leader died, and that boy is taken away and brought up as the new leader. Everybody, including the person himself, knows from the very beginning that he is the new Dalai Lama. It sounds very strange to modern Western ears. We prize highly the right of every person to freedom of choice about their future. Even hereditary monarchs can abdicate. But the Dalai Lama has no choice, and there is no question about who he is. In Judaism, it was very different. Many Jews of Jesus' day believed, and many Jews today still believe this, that God would send an anointed king who would be the spearhead of the movement that would free Israel from oppression and bring justice and peace to the world at last. Nobody knew when or where this anointed king would be born, though many believed he would be a true descendant of King David. God had made wonderful promises about his future family. Some would have pointed to the prophecy of Micah chapter 5 verses 1 to 3, which Matthew quotes in chapter 2, as indicating that the coming king should be born in Bethlehem. And the word for anointed king in the Jewish languages, Hebrew and Aramaic, was the word we normally pronounce as Messiah. What would the Messiah be like? How would people tell he had arrived? Nobody knew exactly, but there were many theories. Many saw him as a warrior king who would defeat the pagan hordes and establish Israel's freedom. Many saw him as one who would purge the temple and establish true worship. Everybody who believed in such a coming king knew that he would fulfill Israel's scriptures and bring God's kingdom into being at last, on earth as it was in heaven. But nobody had a very clear idea of what all this would look like on the ground. In the first century, there were several would-be messiahs who came and went, attracting followers who were quickly dispersed when their leader was caught by the authorities. One thing was certain. To be known as a would-be messiah was to attract attention from the authorities, and almost certainly hostility. So when Jesus wanted to put the question to his followers, he took them well away from their normal sphere of activity. Caesarea Philippi is in the far north of the land of Israel, well outside the territory of Herod Antipas, a good two days' walk from the Sea of Galilee. Even the form of his question, here in Matthew's Gospel at least, is oblique. Who do people say the Son of Man is? That is, who do people say that this person here, in other words, but without saying it, I myself am? Jesus must have known the answer he would get, but he wanted the disciples to say it out loud.